Hey everyone, welcome to Data Millennials. I am Atul and in this video we are going to see how we can create and customize a cost chart with ranges in Google Data Studio. In our previous video, we looked how we can create and customize cost chart with no ranges or a simple cost chart. In this video, we are going to see how we can create and customize cost chart with ranges. You can see over here, this is the ranges. So, we are going to create a similar Gauss chart which you can see over here in this video. So before we go ahead and start creating this Gauss chart, we should understand what exactly a Gauss chart is and how we should use it in our dashboard. So Gauss chart gives you a way to quickly see how well a given matrix is performing against a target goal. The component of a Gauss chart are a center bar which shows the actual value of the metric you are graphing which is this one. This is the central bar which is till this point which is 2.5 million. Then an optional vertical line showing a target value. So this is your target value, which is 3 million. Then an optional comparison value and an optional colored band that represents the thresholds. So these colored bands which you see over here, different shaded regions are your threshold ranges such as poor, average, good. So you can use Gauss chart to monitor various health or performance KPI within your dashboard. So Gauss chart in Looker Studio visualize a single metric and you can optionally display a minimum or a maximum value or you can also display a target value. You can put comparison value as well as you can set up to five different ranges which is over here. You can also change the chart color and apply data filters on the Gauss chart. So let's go and see how we can create this Gauss chart with ranges. So first of all, what I'm going to do over here is that I'm going to click on edit so that I will be in edit mode and then I'm going to create a page over here so that I can show you how we can create this cost chart from scratch. So we will be using this data over here, which has country name, number of stocks transferred in thousand and date. As you can see over here. In page 1, we have number of a stock transferred in 1000, which is 2.5 million. So we will be replicating this cost chart with ranges in our page 2 from scratch. So the first thing in order to create a cost chart with ranges is that you need a data source. If you have already added a data source in your data studio or looker, then you can start creating this cost chart. Else you can click on resources, then click on manage added data sources. Then you have to click on add a data source. Then from Google connectors, you can connect your data source to Looker. Once your data source is connected, then you have to click on add a chart. Then you have to scroll down to the last. And you will see the second option over here, which is Gauss with ranges. You have to click over here and then Looker will allow you to add this Gauss chart on your data studio. Once you click on it, then you will see that Looker by default has selected some matrices over here in your setup section as well as it has selected some date range dimension. So we are going to discuss each and every option that we have over here in setup section as well as we are going to discuss each and every option that we have over here in style section. And as we will be discussing this style and setup section simultaneously we will be replicating or creating this chart as we had created this chart. So. The first thing that we are going to discuss is the setup section. So the setup section helps you to configure the chart options. And the first option that we have over here is data source. So a data source provides the connection between the component and the underlying data set. So here your component is this cost chart and your underlying data set is this data set which we had loaded and from which we have created this cost chart. Now the next option that we have over here is date range dimension. So this option appears if your data source has a valid date dimension. As my data source has a column date of transfer, it's a valid date. That's why Looker has by default selected this date of transfer as a date range dimension. So this date range dimension is used as the basis for limiting the date range for this specific graph. Now the next option that we have over here is metrics. So this matrix measures the thing contained in the dimension and provide the numeric scale and data series for this chart. For example, as you can see, Looker has by default selected record count over here as metrics 
and this metric 5.1 k is the numeric scale and data series for this specific cost chart so what we have to do over here is that we have to show number of stock transferred in thousand so i'll click over here and select number of stock transferred in thousand which is 2.5 million so if i go to my page one and select this gauss chart you will see that we have the same number 2.5 million over here right now after this matrix we have this optional matrix so if you on this optional matrix then you will be able to add an additional matrix in your gauss chart so suppose if i have not selected this optional matrix and i click on view then you will see that you do not have any option over here which says optional matrix right now if i click on edit go back over here under this setup section i select optional matrix and i add a matrix as count of country name okay now if i go back and click on view i come over here on my chart and i click over here or keep my mouse over here then i'll see optional matrix option if i click on it then i will be able to see this additional matrices which i selected in my optional matrix which is country name if i select this then this gauss chart will show me the count of country names over here so let's select number of stock transferred in thousand over here and click on edit the next option that we have over here is default date range so this default date range helps you to limit the date range for this specific cost chart so we have two options over here auto it uses the default date range determined by the charts data source so when you select auto then this gauss chart will select all the data or all the date that we have in our underlying data but when you select this option custom it lets you use the calendar widget from here to select a custom date range for the chart so if you click over here you have a lot of custom date range selection you can select it based on your requirement but for us we will select auto over here then we have this comparison date range so it displays the comparison data for the selected time period if you want to compare your data for a selected a specific period of time then you can click over here then select a start date and end date or you have these options over here so that you can compare your data on this cost chart now the last option within the setup is filter so this filter restrict the data that is displayed on the component by including or excluding the values you specify so for us the component over here is this gauss chart and if you want to exclude or include certain values in your gauss chart then you can add a filter so to add a filter you have to click on add a filter over here then you have to click on create a filter then the first thing that you need to do is that you need to give a name of the filter then you can either select include or exclude then you have to select the field from which you want to either include or exclude a value then you have to select a condition from here and then you have to give a value once you had given your value then you can click on save and then the filter will be applied on your gauss chart and your gauss chart will show data based on your filtration now if i click on view then you can see that we have this gauss chart which shows 2.5 million okay we have a random range over here from zero till here then from this point to this point and this point to this point and then this five this point so we have five ranges so this is zero to one one to two two to three then three to four and four to five but if i go to my earlier page you have this color and this visualization aspect so our gauss chart which we have created right now is nowhere near to this visual aspect so in order to create our gauss chart more visually appealing we have to tweak some style properties of this gauss chart so a style property over here controls the overall presentation and appearance of the chart so the first option that you have in your style properties is primary metric these option control the appearance of the scorecard current data okay and 
within primary metric the first option that we have is the compact number so it rounds the number and displays the unit indicator for example as you can see over here i have unselected this compact number and you can see that we have 2.5 million more than 2.5 million of number of stocks and it's it may be very hard for some user to read so if we select this compact number then user can easily read that the number of stock transferred is 2.5 million now the next option that we have is decimal precision it sets the number of decimal places in your metric value so right now it's one decimal value if you want to increase it you can increase it from here then in style section we have next option of bar colors so this section control the appearance of the center value bar which is this center value bar as well as the ranges now the first option within bar color is bar color it sets the color of the value bar so let's select this color and then the option that we have over here is range color so it select the color of the ranges so we'll select this color now we have this option range limits so range limit specify the threshold value for the chart range often indicate poor average and good threshold and are turned off by default in gauss chart you can add up to five ranges in a gauss chart with ranges option so range one is specify that it sets the threshold for the poor range range two is specify that it sets the threshold for average range range three is specify it sets the threshold for good range then range 4 specify it sets the threshold for very good range and if you want to add an additional range which is range 5 then it sets the threshold for the excellent range okay so what we are going to do is that in order to replicate this graph we'll copy each of the ranges that we had applied earlier and we will copy it somewhere and then we'll use the same range in the gauss chart that we are creating right now so i had pasted all the ranges over here from this graph which i had created earlier and i will be using these ranges in my graph which i am creating right now a chart which i am creating right now so I'll go to style and set the first range which is this one. Then this will be my range 2. This will be my range 3. This will be my range 4. And this will be my range 5. So let's recap once more that what exactly is range 1 range 1 is a threshold for the poor range range 2 is a threshold for the average range range 3 is the threshold for good range range 4 is threshold for very good range and range 5 is threshold for excellent range now after this ranges we have option of axis it controls the appearance of the chart axis the first option that we have over here is show axis it shows or hides the chart axis now we have axis minimum it sets the minimum value for the axis and this is axis man maximum it sets the maximum value of our axis as you can see by default looker has selected mi minimum axis as 0 so we'll remove it over here and maximum axis as 5 so we'll also remove it from here now the next option that we have is target so this target lets you specify the target value for the chart Within target, the first option that we have is show target. It shows or hides the vertical target bar. So as you can see over here, right now the vertical target bar is over here because my target value is 2.5. So if I update my target value over here, which is around 3 million, then you will see that the target value or target bar is appearing over here. then the next option that we have is missing data so this data helps you to deal with your missing data if you have a missing data in your underlying data then you can show it as either no data zero hyphen null or blank then we have labels so 
labels let you specify the font type font color and size of matrix so this one is the font color you can change the font color over here from this one you can increase the font size and from this one you can change the font family then we have this hide metric name with this option you can either hide or show the metric name then we have this hide metric value from this option you can show or hide the metric value then you have this option of background and border this is the background option it sets the chart background color so let's select the chart background color as this or let's select some other chart background yep then we have this border radius it adds rounded border to the chart background when the radius is zero the background shape has 90 degree corner when the border radius is 100 it produces a circular radius as you can see it produces a circular radius then we have this opacity it sets the chart opacity 100% opacity completely hides object behind the chart and 0% opacity makes the chart invisible so it's always suggested that you should always select either 90 or 100% of the chart opacity then we have this border color it sets the chart border color then we have border weight it sets the chart border line thickness and then we have border style it sets the chart border line style so we have four different styles solid that we are using right now then we have dashed the third option that we have is dotted and the last option that we have is double so let's keep double and the last option within a style is this add border shadow it adds a shadow to the chart lower and right border so now if i click on view you will be able to see that we have five ranges over here that we had defined in our style section and we have this target vertical bar which is around 3 million for us which we also set it from only the style section so this is how basically you can create and customize a gauze chart with ranges in data studio or looker so happy learning and see you in the next video